Congratulations! You found the Sandu Pearls Stock Market Commentary for July 5th, 2015. Market Breadth With this past week's market decline, our bull bear point and figure ratio declined from 0.93 to 0.73, falling further into bearish territory. The total count of securities in bullish or bearish patterns fell 2% to 3,045. The count of bearish stocks increased 9%, while the count of stocks in bullish patterns decreased 14%. The Santu Pearls PNF Market Breadth Summary Chart shows us a market now six consecutive weeks in bearish territory. Paid subscribers have access to the Open Office Calc data from which the chart is generated. You may become a paid subscriber by visiting s2pmarketsignal.com, clicking Membership, and clicking Register, then following the prompts. The well-known market breadth indicator, the NASDAQ McClellan Summation Index, fell 124 points for the 11th rise in 22 weeks. At a negative 96.13 points, it continues below all nine tops above plus 100 and above all four bottoms below minus 100 in the last three years. Volume Analysis In this week's volume analysis, the NASDAQ Composite Index ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode. In the last two weeks, the NASDAQ had zero accumulation days and two distribution days. Accumulation days are counted when the index closes up on higher volume than the prior market day, while distribution days occur when the index closes down on volume higher than the prior market day. Last week, the NASDAQ ended in distribution mode. Momentum. The extreme behavior of the CCI 20 daily continued, dropping below minus 100 this past week while having touched plus 200 the week prior. At minus 83.99, it is outside the plus or minus 50 range for a valid zero line reject long entry signal and has four consecutive days below zero for a possible change of Woody's trend early the coming week. In Woody's CCI trading system, six consecutive bars above or below zero are required for a change of trend. The weekly CCI 20 of the NASDAQ Composite Index began a Woody's uptrend 50 weeks ago, while the daily CCI 20 began a Woody's uptrend 11 weeks ago. The CCI 20 weekly dropped sharply but remains in a Woody's uptrend and at plus 10.42 is now within the plus or minus 50 range for a valid zero line reject long entry signal should the market rise sufficiently this coming week. Industry rotation the last two weeks. Only one of the top five industries is positive and all of the bottom five are negative. Bullish KBW Bank has entered the top five. S&P Retail and Brokers continue in the top five. Gold and Silver continues in the bottom five. Bearish, Computer Hardware and Disk Drives continue in the bottom five. Networkers has entered the bottom five. Oil Services has left the bottom five. Focus this week from HTTP www peakprosperity.com. In a world of artificial liquidity, cash is king, and you'd better have some stashed out of the system. By Nomi Prince. Some key points are the following. Global central banks are afraid. Before Greece tried to stand up to the Troika, they were merely worried now it's clear that no matter what they tell themselves and the world about the necessity or even righteousness of their monetary policies, liquidity can still disappear in an instant. 
It's not so much whether this cheap money game can continue for the near future on an international scale. It can. It is. The bigger problem is that central banks have no plan B in the event of a massive liquidity event. QE infinity isn't a solution. It's a deflection. It's a form of financial subterfuge that causes extra problems. The BIS also states global financial markets remain dependent on central banks. Dependent is a strong word. How quickly the idea of free markets has been turned on its head. Central banks are not yet there, but rising volatility is indicative of the accelerating approach to the nowhere left to go mark from a monetary policy perspective. Not only have the major banks been the main recipient of manufactured liquidity, they have also received consolidated access to our deposits, which they can use like hostages to negotiate future bailout situations. In this cauldron of instability and lack of leadership, cash is the one remaining financial possession that Main Street can translate into goods, services, and security. That's why private banks want more control over it. There's a difference between physical cash, the kind you can touch and use immediately, and the electronic kind associated with your bank balance or credit card cash advance limit. If you hold it, you have it, even if keeping it in a bank means it's probably slammed with various fees. Bail-ins, like any cash limitations, imply that if a bank needs emergency liquidity, your deposits are the place to find it, which has negative repercussion on your own solvency. This is exactly what the Glass-Steagall Act of 1933, coupled with the creation of the FDIC, sought to avoid. Banks confiscating your money at the worst possible times. The war on cash is thus really a war on the difference between the money you can hold on to and the money the banks can take away from you. The existence of this cash debate underscores the need for a personal policy of cash extraction from the big banks. Do you have one? The banking system runs on liquidity. Banks will do anything to keep it flowing, including rating their depositors. The risks of a global liquidity crunch are dangerously high today. Thank you for tuning in for this week's Sand to Pearls stock market commentary featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart compiled by Donald Pearl www.s2pmarketsignal.com Calm. Hoping that you've had a marvelous Independence Day weekend, that you're looking forward to a wonderful week coming up, and wishing you true success.